Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and we got some massive, massive nerfs for a lot of the Mythic Plus dungeons coming out into patch 9.1, while the class balancing and tuning for this new build of 9.1 on PTR hasn't really been so much focused on classes, but rather one that focused on changing up the dungeons, either nerfing some of the dungeons and the mechanics that people really dislike, which will hopefully make your next M plus runs in the patch 9.1 far easier to accomplish, especially since the KSM requirement is getting adjusted in the next patch, but also the new seasonal affix and affix that will spawn in these jailers, lieutenants that need to be defeated, a more challenging enemy that's supposed to be spawned throughout the dungeon that does drop you a powerful ability or a choice of abilities, these guys and their mechanics have gotten adjusted to be a little bit more involved and maybe even more interesting. Let's take a look at everything we have so far, starting off with the seasonal two affixes. The first Jailer's Lieutenant we'll have to talk about is Execution of Varuth. Varuth didn't change too much, he still has that oppressive aura that causes 30% less healing for your party. He'll still blast the tank with the ability of Sever, trying to put up a bleed on him. And Raze will still be a range mechanic where he will target a range class, charge to them and pop a bleed on him as well. But now he has a new ability called Wave of Terror, which will do AoE damage and fears any player not standing on top of an ally. Overall, Execution of Aruth isn't super worse than he was, but he was very focused in terms of who he does damage to. Usually he'll just slam down the tank with that bleed, or he'll just focus one of the range classes, and a lot of the range classes could kind of cheese the raise ability. If you had any kind of line of sight, you could just hide behind it as he's about to charge, then the boss kind of resets himself and then bugs out. And then you're eliminating a whole portion of damage that the, uh, this lieutenant guy can't do. But now with the new ability of Wave of Terror, it is going to be at least a little bit of extra damage on top of what the healer already has to deal with, trying to heal up the tank. So any kind of off healing you can do, especially with the fact that there's 50% healing reduction with this guy, it does mean that nuking him down as quickly as possible will be a priority for everybody instead of just always being able to cheese him the whole time. Or as the Cold Heart got one small adjustment, he still have the Chilling Presence as a passive, which reduces the amount of movement speed your party has by 50%. Biting Cold ability is something that will still do a significant bit of damage. You will want to make sure you're away from your party in order to reduce the amount of damage that could do to your allies. Frostlands is still very, very deadly if you stay in front of it. But also now he does an ability called Cold Snap, where he'll create swirlies for you to dodge, which with all the movement speed reduction, it does mean you have to be on your toes all the time. The changes that Auras have gotten make melee a little bit better because if a melee can walk out of all these swirlies and the frontals, then they're able to deal with this lieutenant much easier. Any other range class that has a lot of mobility while continuing to do damage like Beastmaster Hunter also have gotten a much easier play into it. Anything that has to stand still and cast spells and doesn't have a lot of mobility are going to be the classes that will probably end up suffering the most with this guy. Incinerator Arcalath got a buff, his Soul Forge Flames, which is a passive that continuously does damage to everybody in your party, has gotten buffed by 33% to be a little bit more deadly for healers. He still puts bottles on the ground, so you will have to be very careful with your positioning, and he will still cast Melt Soul often. So for a healer, you will not be able to dispel it fast enough, which is where a class like Shadow Priest will be very, very helpful. He also now has a new cast ability called Inferno, which is interruptible, but if it's not interrupted, it does a large amount of AoE damage that will hit all players. And right now it does about 15,000 damage on a plus 10 keystone, but Melt Soul debuff is going to make it that much harder for your party to survive a single blast of Inferno. So classes with short kicks, like melee, are going to be very much wanted in order to deal with this guy a lot easier. So I'm going to the breaker got a complete rework in terms of how he functions and the way that he interacts between him and the tank, as well as him and your party. He still has a debuff intimidation where he'll do a ton extra physical damage, so be careful if you pull on him with a bunch of other physical damage dealers in the dungeon. This guy was the biggest joke prior to this update in terms of how tanks and other classes dealt with him damage-wise, because he was just completely kiteable. So Blizzard decided to change it. Crush is going to be his tank buster ability, and if for some reason the tank is nowhere near this guy, he will try to grip the tank in to try to crush him. There is some line of sight stuff you can do with him not to get yoinked in, but for the most part, if you're trying to just kite this guy around, take zero damage, you will not be able to do it with Sogan on the breaker. He also does an ability called Seismic Wave, which from time to time he'll just do a lot of AoE damage for your healer to heal. Finally, Massive Smash. He'll group all players in melee, rooting them with bindings, which you can DPS, 
but you can also hand of freedom them you can remove them if you shift as a druid and any other ability that removes roots is going to be able to deal with this mechanic as well but normally you're supposed to be able to dps the shackles before you can escape the master smash which is kind of a long cast but it is going to be pretty painful if it does hit Honestly, this guy is more interesting now because it is actually like a mechanic to play compared to prior where you just cut him around circles where he literally couldn't hit the tank. Another thing to note is there's still a lot of balance tuning happening with some of the different powers that you unlock inside of this dungeon. For every single one of the lieutenant, it looks like Blizzard is taking out powers that are just not getting picked up at all and try to add new stuff in, just something more interesting for DPS, healers, and tanks to apply and try out. There's even buffs and nerfs towards the already active powers. It looks like Blizzard toned down a lot of their damage at first, but now they're trying to give some damage back to make some of these powers really feel worthwhile. So there's a lot of those small updates happening with these powers that never actually hit any kind of wow head post or a blue post, but there are changes happening over at 9.1 when it comes to these powers. They are trying out different numbers. They are trying to throw out different powers for you to test out and play with. So there is quite a bit that's happening in the background that we just haven't seen ourselves. Besides that, we got a bunch of boss adds and affix nerfs happening for patch 9.1. The other side, we have Arcane Lightning from Dealer Zyxa getting changed up a bit, so it baseline does less damage. Also, Arcane Vulnerability, they have adjusted it a little bit. It looks like Arcane Vulnerability is going to have a passive debuff that it stacks, forcing players to pass around the debuff more evenly. So this one isn't exactly a nerf, but rather a change to the Dealer Zyxa. Hakar is one of the bosses that's gotten quite a bit of a change. His biggest change, though, is that whenever he gates the shield from the Blood Barrage, he actually just freezes in everything he does. He doesn't auto attack the tank. His energy regeneration is paused. So that means you'll have less blood phases for Hakar. It might not mean much for many of you, but this change is pretty massive. It just nerves out Hakar in terms of just how strong he is, especially in tyrannical weeks, which means there's more opportunities for players to DPS down into his health bar which is pretty massive because Hakar will feel less of a tanky boss to deal with. DPS will have more room in order to actually DPS his health bar. And overall, it should be a pretty massive improvement when it comes to taking down that boss, whether on Fortified or Tyrannical. Some of the other bosses that saw nerfs is going to be Amarth with his Tortured Echo getting nerfed. In Sangu Depths, the first boss, Juggernaut Raj, is getting nerfed even more. And Essence of Eruption does slight less damage as well. But when it comes to the Theater of Pain dungeon, it looks like a mechanic has made a return opportunity strikes so during theater of pain you usually fight these three ads one of them is this big warrior that slams down the tank with mortal strike and the other two are casters one a little bit more up front in your face the other teleports all over the room but there's always been the fourth boss that's not really a boss with a health bar but rather one with an extra mechanic and that is zero zero is this rogue that skulks in the audience and will sometimes ambush an enemy and will try to do a bit of damage to them it looks like they're bringing zero back into theater of pain she was pretty easy to deal with any kind of ability like a fear a freezing trap any kind of like cc was enough to interrupt her but next time you're doing this dungeon over 9-1 you'll have to watch out for your healer and watch out for zura because this is making return back in the game saying with Debs does have explosive anger explosive rage and servant slice abilities from the ads getting nerfed so this should be pretty good for everybody in the group whether it's a tank or dps also, Halls of Atonement, the Thrash ability is going to do less damage, but has a 60 yards range, so outrage at this ability as a caster will not be possible. Wicked Bolt is another ability that's gotten slight buff. It doesn't really look like this will affect too many classes, except for maybe Protection Warriors, since they're the only class that probably has some of the worst magic mitigation without like active abilities. We also saw a massive nerf to storming. First of all, it'll travel much slower. It'll always travel clockwise to be easier to predict. It also does less health damage. And as soon as it touches a player, it despawns. So maybe classes like, I don't know, a Death Knight with anti-magic shell can just walk through all these stormings and remove them, which hopefully will make storming a much easier affix to deal with. And for every tank out there, Necrotic is slightly nerfed. It doesn't apply nearly as often. It looks like it applies every other melee swing. So tanks that go from like zero Necrotic stacks to 40 in a single global as they pull a bunch of adds, it's going to be a little bit easier to deal with. That's quite a bit of updates and they're all pretty exciting. Definitely excited for the storming nerf. Let me know your thoughts guys in the comments below what you think about the updates. And as always, I'll see all of you in another video.